Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, wish you all a very happy feast of the Corpus Christi or Corpus Domini, the solemnity of the body and blood of the Lord. This is a wonderful feast for we all enjoy often the body and blood of the Lord. This sacrament nourishes us and makes us joyful spiritually. It's one in which we taste the goodness of the Lord and we get consoled in our troubles and sorrows. In fact, it's a very difficult thing to get to know the significance of this sacrament. That's the reason why the church celebrates its feast on two days in the liturgical year. We hold this at fast on Monday Thursday, the first day of the Paschal Tridu, recalling the institution of the Eucharist. But such a single day celebration is in Tinef, so we need to reflect further on the meaning and the depth of this sacrament and so after the paschal tide the church comes once again to reflect and pray over it now today's readings are quite fit for this reflection the first reading the reading from exodus chapter 24 verses 3 to 8 sets the tone for the celebration as it constitutes the background for understanding the eucharist in the gospel passage we hear the institution of the body and blood of the lord as the new covenant mark chapter 14 verses 12 to 16 and 22 to 26 the passage from the letter to hebrews the second reading interprets further the eucharist in terms of the new covenant we shall base our reflection focusing on the gospel passage without at the same time forgetting the other two readings now banquets have much importance in the gospels jesus sits at table several times he sits with his disciples with those labeled as sinners and even with the general public the people now jesus last act before his passion is simply that of sitting at table with his disciples this is the paschal banquet pasch or passover was the most important feast of the israelites in that they were recalling the great things that the lord had done for their fathers by that they were professing their faith in god and getting strengthened in it the paschal meal or dinner was an integral part of the celebration so it is in this background that the institution of the eucharist takes place to the disciples sitting at the table jesus gives in the form of bread and wine his body and blood this is a farewell meal Jesus will be soon handed over and killed thus Jesus will not again be moving around in the country with his disciples and will not be sitting again at table with them as he used to do several times during his ministry at the same time he will remain with them and create a community where he will occupy the focal point he will remain with them in the form of bread and wine that will be the future form of his presence Jesus now bids farewell still he will remain with them now the blood that he offers to them in the chalice is the blood of the covenant shed for many at the paschal dinner which recalled the liberation from egypt the stipulations of the sinai covenant were also observed that covenant was not one which was between equal partners what was significant was that god took up the obligation to be their god and to bless them the greater partner i am the lord your god who brought you out of the land of egypt out of the house of slavery so this partner is a greater partner while the other partner is quite low the people the second partner also took upon themselves the responsibility of observing the conditions of the covenant that means the commandments exodus chapter 23 to 17 will say that this covenant was confirmed when Moses dashed or sprinkled the blood on the altar and on the people the sprinkling of the blood on the altar was a sign of the connection with God and that of dashing or sprinkling over the people was a sign of their connection in the covenant the relationship is confirmed or established this we hear today in the first reading now by the shedding of his blood Jesus was constituting a new covenant. He was confirming it. This is explained in the second reading today 
taken from the letter to Hebrews. Now, by his shedding of the blood, Jesus was offering his life. By that, God was showing his love for the world. By that blood, many were forgiven of their sins. It was a true sign of liberation. In fact, two things happened here. One, God obliges himself to forgive. The second thing, by cleansing men and women of their sins, they are enabled to be converted. They also get obliged and competent enough to love. This is the sacrament of the blood that effects a communion between God and human beings. God obliges himself to forgive and men and women, having been cleansed, become competent enough to love. In these signs of bread and wine, Jesus gives his body and blood. That itself means that it's a total offering, a total submitting of one's life, the bread and wine signifying body and blood. The real offering of Jesus took place, in fact, on the cross. It means that this is a sacrament of the crucified one. This calls for a similar offering or commitment from the part of the ones receiving this sacrament. They should also be becoming like the crucified one, ready to offer themselves fully in body and blood. Jesus offers bread and wine. Bread is a sign of our daily nutriment. Wine is a sign of festivity or joy. That means Jesus gives the nutriment required for our daily spiritual living. And even more by wine in the form of being joyful. That means it becomes a joyful giving. Therefore, any offering in response from our part should be something nourishing and joyful. This sacrament enables us to do so, the joy of self-giving. The penultimate line of today's gospel passage is also quite significant. Jesus says, Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the wine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. That is chapter 14 verse 25. Jesus has been with them till now, eating and drinking. From now on, he will not be with them in banquet as he was earlier, but he will be with them in the symbols of bread and wine. It will be an unseen presence, but that will have its climax when they will finally sit at table with him in the kingdom of God. That's what he says, I will not drink of this, the fruit of the wine, until I sit at table in the kingdom of God. So those sharing in the bread and wine will finally be as a climax sitting at table in the kingdom of God. So this bread and wine is a symbol of what is to be realized in the kingdom of God. This sacrament then is a sacrament of hope of what is to be realized in the kingdom of God. Finally, the bread and wine as body and blood were signs of what was to happen to Jesus immediately, his suffering and death. It was a sign of his terrible moments of suffering and death. The realization of the shedding of the blood is still to take place. The reason for such suffering was his choice of doing good, doing the will of the Father. Hence, on everyone who takes part of the bread and wine, there falls the obligation to struggle through suffering, to always embrace what is good and what is the will of the Father. That is something which should come to everyone participating in this celebration of the bread and wine of the Lord. Let our minds be filled with such thoughts and prayers on this beautiful feast of the body and blood of the Lord so that we will be able to engage ourselves in this world as envisaged in the giving of his very self to the world. And that will be a sign of grace for all of us. Amen.